Former AEW and WWE stars have criticized CM Punk. Also, were those AEW suspensions deliberately referenced on last week's SmackDown? And Sasha Banks has given an interview discussing her future plans. More on that in a little while. Hello, yes, it's Jack and Ross back with more news. This, this, the the, the saga of AEW continues to rumble on, Ross. It does, indeed. There's been people shooting once again on CM Punk, who shot, in turn, on other people. Absolutely. Who has been shooting on the man there, Jack? Uh, Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish has been talking for a lot of the past few days, but <laughs> Fightful Select handily have given a nice round, like a, an update on the whole situation, saying Fish left AEW this summer and immediately began criticising CM Punk. Whether it be what Fish claimed was his attitude backstage, his offense, he was very critical on Twitter of those head kicks in particular, or anything else, Fish began taking aim at the AEW talent. Specifically, Fish claimed to NBC Boston that CM Punk was a C-word after their October 2021 match that happened earlier in Fish's run. Ross, do you remember what happened in that match? Is that the one where Bobby Fish kicks out on 3.1 or maybe 2.9? Yes. Yes, it is. So, yeah. up yours, Bobby Fish, it's your own fault, surely. He takes the go to sleep, <laughs> he kicks out there. And then, oh my God, it was it was very weird. Well, Ross, the report goes on to say. It does, yeah. However, there's much more to that story. This the, the report continues. Even backstage detractors of Punk reach out to Fightful Select following Fish's interview and subsequent stories. Grabs it is Will Washington, a friend of the channel, I've been led to believe. Oh, fantastic. I don't know him personally, but he seems like a stand-up jam-up guy, just like El Dandy. Uh, he tweeted a clip that reminded fans that Fish either kicked out right on three or just before the three you saw earlier, um, after the go-to-sleep finish and move in their match. If you'd guess that Punk wasn't happy, Happy about that. It, that it seems to be about right. As many told us, that it was the catalyst for their poor relationship. Several people who remember being backstage at the match were confused as to why he would do that. No, no, it would likely wouldn't go over well. Yeah. I, I wonder why kicking out with two point nine and maybe three point one, or just muddy in the waters of the finish, would upset the guy who was going to win the match. Well, if you watch it, Punk is he takes a little while to make the pinfall. It's not quite Triple H on Booker T, <laughs> but it's he's but he, but the reason that he takes a long time to make the pinfall is because he he can't walk. He's selling the leg, which. Mm. Bobby Fish has been attacking the whole match. So in a way, it's a it's a rock and a hard play. Like if he doesn't, if he rushes over to make the cover, what about all the damage Bobby Fish has done to the leg? Yeah. I think in this specific example, it's hard to fault CM Punk for this, just for this one. Yeah, but if, if Bobby Fish wants to criticize CM Punk's like uh, kicking prowess and whatnot, let me tell you, I'm going to go back there again. There's an episode of Straight to Hell on the channel with Bobby Fish mm. where I swear down, I can't remember because it was a little while ago, but at least three of his stuff was about technique of like wrestlers doing MMA influence uh. things. And he just speaks about the technique of these things. And I'm just sat there going, yeah, that sounds right. That does Bobby Fish, even though I've got no idea what I'm on about at all. Well, at least he's consistent, I suppose. Yeah. Like that, that would make sense. And I get, you know, one of the many things Bobby Fish has said recently is that Punk presents himself as an MMA fighter, but he went and proved that he's not that good at it. And and then Bobby Fish has been saying, well, myself, people like Brian Danielson and stuff, that's been part of our life since we were young. We've always trained some form of martial arts and it's a bit of an insult that Punk tries to incorporate that into his game. When he does admit Fish, I believe in the quote I read, that Punk is a great wrestler, mm. but he shouldn't try and be a fighter as well. It was an uh, interesting point of view, I suppose. Yeah, and I guess the, the last point there on the report saying that there was, wasn't much communication between Punk and Fish, that's always the stem of many issues, mm. that a lack of communication. Absolutely. Oh, um, Kendra's chimed in, which is, I was not expecting this. But <laughs> Kenda's chimed in because because one of Fisher's criticisms of Punk was that he stole the go to sleep from Kenda as a finisher, and and I thought, well, I think it's been said before by Punk maybe that Kenda let that happen or it was final. Punk so was credited. Kenda jumped in and uh, and basically quote retweeted the story about Bobby Fish on Twitter and said, hey now. Let me tell you, it was hard wrestling in WWE for all those years and not being able to use the go to sleep. I'm sure he did, though. Do you think? In NXT. Oh. Like the first time, before his massive injury. When he beat up all those lads in suits. I'm or sure. Or when he was in a suit. I can picture Kendrick, because he would wear that arm thing, wouldn't he? Oh. And there was that gap in his shoulder where he had the surgery. I always remember that, and then getting up there, and then, whoa, <laughs> I think I've posted the wrong story there on the news. I there, got Kat. a bit confused, but I've, <laughs> don't worry, I've improved what Kendrick it's said. There, it's on the screen uh, behind us. But uh, I remember him doing it as well, because I'm sure I remember seeing it on NXT and thinking, Oh, he does it slightly Ooh. differently to Punk. His is more of an abrupt drop, whereas Punk's more like, wee. I'm sure on. there's photographic evidence just to prove our oh. point that Kent did do an NXT. But he, he probably, but the fact that we're struggling to think about it probably means he wasn't allowed to use it regularly. Yeah. Yeah. But I, again, it, it, just his time was blight with injury so much, I can't remember what his definitive finisher was in NXT. No. I, just can just, I can just picture him having people on his shoulders, the black mat, the yellow ropes. Yeah. Oh, I William Regal going like that in the background. But it might not have been too prolific a move, no. I guess. Interesting. Wow. Um, the drama involving CM Punk and the other suspen the suspensions to AEW talent, including Omega and the Bucks, 
Well, that seems to have possibly been deliberately referenced on SmackDown Ross. Yes, Cole was recapping the segment where Ronda Rousey got physical with Adam Pearce on last week's show, and Punk was mentioned that Rousey was disciplined internally for her actions and her punishment. Well, Cole mentioned that Rousey, not Punk. Oh, yeah, if Cole. Oh, on commentary, that would have been got fantastic. him on the brain. That's <laughs> what you should do if you lose AEW. Get yeah. that little blazer black on. Uh, back on, sorry. Um, but uh, 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 punish internally for her actions, and her punishment will not be made public. So Cole oh. said that on A when Rousey was disciplined in turning for her actions, her punishment will not be made public. That's either, that's either got to be a sly one or just a total accident, and I can't tell which. It could be either, because, you know, they, they don't reference AEW a lot, do they? If well, ever. But then he said, sources told me WWE official Adam Pearce had gotten carried away. He's aired his dirty laundry publicly, hence the reason this investigation has been taken behind the scenes. Again, that seems an it's odd a little thing to say. playful little Whoa. jive in it. I don't think there's too much to that. Michael Cole having a ball on commentary. <laughs> he's missing his pal, Pat. Yeah. Corey was there, and it just wasn't the same, <laughs> was it? Do you um, think Triple H is in Cole's ear going, say it, do it, do it, <laughs> yeah. bury him? Why not, eh? The uh, pissant company from back in the day, oh, Triple yeah. H. Oh, it's just a playful jive He said in that it. with Billy Gunn in the ring with him. Yeah. Billy Gunn could have bad <laughs> and now look at Billy Gunn's now the most popular figure in AEW yeah, today. He actually is. Scissor me daddy arse. Um, speaking more slightly on this whole story rumbling on, Kenny Omega had a podcast appearance scheduled recently for Swerve Strickland, Swerve City podcast. It was initially announced for August 31st, but then Swerve has given an update on the likelihood of that happening. Yes, due to unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances, the interview with Kenny Omega has been postponed to a later date. Stay tuned for a rescheduled appearance in the future. Our next guest will be announced, well, it'll be announced by now, I guess, by the time oh. it's Video goes live. Let's know who he's announced. Monday, 12 p.m. He's written down here, which is that'll be about five in America, probably. Oh, no, is it not their time? So, 12 their time will be like five hour time. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well, it's not live then. Oh, well, Well, let us know. Come back to this video (laughs) once it's been announced and let us know. Uh, this, this surely, I'm assuming, but. Is this not because of his suspension? Do you yeah, reckon? I mean, I've, I've watched a couple of Swerve's podcasts, and when he has the right guest on, it's all about music. I watched the one with Jericho recently. In Jericho's Ooh. house, the lights were going off in the background, but it was mainly just about music with a little bit of wrestling sprinkled in here. I don't know how much of a gamer Swerve is, but apart from what's Kenny Omega known for, apart from, you know, wrestling in the games? Just, just lived in Japan for a long time lived maybe Japan, he's got some interesting yeah. stuff to talk about that yeah but they're not going to be able to avoid the, the issues of last week are they so I guess it's it's the, it's the sensible thing to do especially when a guy's maybe suspended and there's legal process going yeah, on yeah very true oh I'm just waiting Ross all week there's going to be something isn't there every day yeah and and fair play to him Tom's taking a very well deserved holiday but I'm scared how we're going to cope without it. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, also, Sasha Banks, or the legit bus Sishy Bunks, as we used mm. to call her when yeah, we thought she was wrestling. Go to TNA. Yeah. Yeah, go to Impact, yeah. Uh, but Sasha Banks has given an interview. She was talking about, uh, so talking to, right, this is a Star Wars podcast. I'm probably going to butcher the name. She was speaking to Arch to, Ra- to Radio. <laughs> to Radio. <laughs> to Radio. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yeah. To radio, <laughs> giving some details on what she's working on in the future. And it's, Ross, it's not necessarily wrestling. God, we've seen her on the catwalk last week. The world has no limits, no bounds for Sishy Bunks. She says, there is so much I'm creating right now. It's all under an umbrella. I'm an actor, writer, producer, an extraordinaire entertainer. Wow. It's like, Sounds like Chris Jericho. Vince McMahon's written this program. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, all, those, uh, all within those realms, I'm doing something. You just have to stay tuned. You have a microphone. That's something big I want to do. Do. Not podcasting, but music. Oh. I don't know if that's the number one thing because of acting. Uh, there are a lot of things coming up. Acting right now, there's lots of acting coming. Um, I'm really starting to focus my mind around music and the music realm and being a kind of director in that space of creating musical video piece. Wow. I mean, Snoop Dogg. It's, oh, <laughs> it sounds very much like wrestling's not she's either deliberately avoided mentioning it there because she knows she's coming back or she's avoided mentioning it because she knows she's not coming back which isn't very helpful no she's keeping everything open she's wonderful tease isn't she yeah. I remember back in the day but I just want to see her back in the wrestling uh, to be honest I'm not going to be the first I'm not going to be that person who says oh she'll be rubbish at music because she might come out and be brilliant at music so I don't want to do that uh, it's Sasha Banks isn't it? I don't want to be an idiot she can do whatever she, she wants she'll be fantastic at everything I'm with Naomi alongside it because Naomi was there doing the fashion catwalk last week as well yeah. Naomi's got some history in the music she sang her own wrestling theme Naomi didn't she do a song on Total Divas once or something there was like a they had a producer song and she did it as Trin you know her, oh, so. no idea 
I'm sure I got told this one. I wasn't a big viewer of Total Divas myself. I was done by the time the Shoot Hurricane Rana came around, so I assume it came after that. Mm, absolutely. But I, they, those two lasses could do anything they want to together, and I assume they maybe would do. I don't know. Mm. Sasha Banks, are you going to do a song with Naomi? And Snoop Doggy Dog doing a, a rap where he just says the same thing he always does. Oh, I'm Snoop oh, Dogg. Dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he used to rap hot. about things in the 90s, yeah. controversial things as well. Now he just keeps it safe and says, I'm Snoop Dogg. That's Get my hot shorty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Smoke a fatty. And all that kind of good stuff. Uh, in that recent interview that we talked about in the last news video where Triple H talked to Ariel Helwani, the melter of MMA. And, and wrestling and now. Wrestling now. <laughs> um, he talked about the possibility of seeing Sasha Banks back in WWE. Ariel Helwani asked Triple H and Triple H just said, time will tell. Time will tell. Give us some solid answers, please. You know what? When Triple H first took over, I think a lot of us thought the first piece of business he would have got to was getting Sasha Banks and Naomi back in the fold. It might it's, have been the first thing he tried. It's a little bit of a shock that it hasn't happened so far, but maybe Sasha Banks and Naomi, obviously we saw them on the catwalk at some, it looked big and fancy, whatever they were doing. Yeah. Maybe they've got their schedule booked for the time being and they're just they're waiting for that little gap to pop up and that's when they'll make a, a big return to the wrestling because I'm sure most people like to see them back. If they can hold out until the Rumble, if, that, if that's what's happening, then that'll mm. be a huge Rumble pop. Yeah. For both of them. Well, imagine that and Cody on the same night. Oh, oh God, we'll yeah, Cody, of course. Cool. Bent. Um, right, thank you very much. Do we need to, do we need no, to chat it? anymore? We've filled enough time. Right, thank you very much for watching this news video. There's another <laughs> one on the channel. As well. Just a peek behind the curtain there. There's another one on this channel already. Uh, do watch that if you haven't seen it already. And thank you very much indeed. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and we'll see you very There's soon. There's a tier list me and Jack did about AEW pay-per-views, which is the best in history, which is the worst. Watch it and tell us how wrong we are. People have been enjoying that so far. I looked oh, at the comments. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Thank you again, and we'll see you shortly.